In today's video, we're going to cover one of my favorite topics and most common questions. How can I learn to study Japanese fluently? How can I learn to read Japanese fluently? How that plays into the JLPT, which is coming up for some of you guys. How to get all the gears rolling. You can break it up into a couple goals. Some people want to be able to pass the JLPT N2 or N1, and spite of that really pesky reading section. Some people just want to be able to watch their favorite shows or read their favorite books. Whatever it is, I've found that reading Japanese regularly is actually one of the keys to make sure that you're really cementing all of that good juicy stuff in your mind. So today we're going to cover basically all of that. <laughs> and I have a special guest to help us break it all down. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much for having me back. Um, my name is Brian and I am the author of Human Japanese and the founder of Satori Reader. And recently, actually, thanks to you, Loretta, we've been uh, dipping our toes in the waters of YouTube videos as well, trying to break we've down... We've pulled you over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to break down grammar questions that people have and uh, help people to understand things. It's great because you go into really actual in-depth breakdowns of rules and the systems that are going on. We talked about that in our last video, but basically the nitty gritty parts behind the language. And that's something I get so many comments asking for real in-depth explanation. So you got some good stuff over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. When you're in that sort of foggy land of, of kind of knowing how it works, but not exactly, yeah, it can be a little confusing. Yeah, I'd like to shed some light, bring some light to people. Let's start obviously with Satori Reader, with the app. Can you kind of give like a brief elevator pitch of what we're looking at here? Sure. So Satori Reader is basically our best effort to give people who are trying to get started with reading Japanese, but are coming up against some of the, the hurdles that you face, not only kanji, but just uh, all kinds of unfamiliar vocabulary and grammar, to give those people the tools they need to stay energized about studying Japanese and also learn a lot of stuff at the same time. One of the biggest questions I've been getting from a lot of people, because I've been I've been kind of doing this thing on Instagram called like Bookera, where we all share books that we're reading. Oh. It's a hashtag. Okay. And um, where we basically, we share books that we're reading and talk about like topics that interest us. And the questions that I've been getting the most since doing that is basically, but how do you actually read? Like the attention span behind it? And where do you take breaks? Does that interrupt? And like, how do you skip like names? Right. Because it's really hard to figure out how to read something when you have to stop every three sentences. You know, even Japanese people have to ask sometimes how, how someone reads their name. And in novels, usually the first time you encounter it, it has furigana there. Yeah. So, um, you know, you might want to bend the page, the corner end of the page there, so if you if you want to flip back to it. Because I, mm. I really am a huge fan of reading out loud. And yeah. in order to do that, you have to actually know the reading of all the characters' names. Otherwise, you're going along <laughs> Who and you're knew? Like, you, go, you do the little <laughs> thing as you, as you pass over that person's name. Um, this is probably going to sound really severe, but I actually stop and look up every word that I encounter that I'm not 100% sure about. <gasps> you feel like it's an admission of failure uh, <laughs> anytime you have to look something up, right? Like yeah. you just lost like half a percentage. But I look at reading as the time when you're going to the gym and you know, you, you're there to push yourself and make progress and learn something new. and. If you come up to those moments when you have the opportunity to learn something new and you kind of skip over it because you just want to keep going with the story, it's sort of a lost opportunity. Huh. If you're doing that like five times a sentence, that's really, that can be a little discouraging. There's a balance. In that case, it might just be that you need to find material that's a little bit, you know, less less overwhelming in that way. Does See, that sound crazy and to you? I've always, no, I've always said the opposite. My, hmm. I've always done it from like, but now you've said your gym analogy and, it, and I'm thinking about all the actual sets and reps I've been skipping both at the gym and at the book gym. I do the exact opposite. I've always done like a quick sight read and I'll like, I'll do like five or 10 pages, like just, sight read with mm -hmm. a pencil mm -hmm. and like underline anything and then come back. Okay. Well, and then, but yeah. then I, then I read twice. <laughs> no, you should. If you're going to read it again and you're, you're committed to that, then by all means. Yeah. The sight reading experience is really important too. When I was finishing up my grad program, I had to, like, I, I could not look up everything. If I did, I would have never finished the reading. What I learned really quickly that way was how to read like top line. Mm -hmm. which is what I really think helped me pass the N1. I also think if I had to 
take the N2 or the N3, where they asked me to dive deeper into each of those topics, then I would have to, you know, put on sunglasses and duck out. Especially on the JLPT. I mean, a lot of times they, they have these, these um, problems that are specifically designed to... For me types. <laughs> <laughs> I got this book. I was preparing to take the N1. So I got a, a book of, of questions. And there was this one question that every single Japanese person I showed it to got it wrong. I showed it to three people. They all got it wrong huh. because it was like actually designed to lead you into a trap if <gasps> you were if you were skimming. You know, maybe that's a, a good test for me. Maybe I should switch up and uh, uh, switch to your reading style. Because with with like with Satori Reader and everything, it actually allows you to do that easily. Like with a book, there is the problem of saying I have to stop or I have to find another resource. Or if it's a physical yeah. book, how do you look it up if you don't actually know the character? Yes, exactly. And there, so there's yeah, there's a critical mass of kanji knowledge that you need in order to yeah. actually apply my style when you're reading paper books. So there was one thing I wanted to mention um, about the importance of reading. Tying that into the JLPT, it, it helps you to grow outside of your bubble and outside of your comfort zone. And one of the reasons that that is so important is because in tests like the JLPT, I mean, there is really an incredible variety of, of topics that are taken up on that test, you know? I mean, yeah. one might be a, like a science topic yeah. and then you have some like curmudgeonly, curmudgeonly old man, like complaining about something. You just, you have to be prepared for a really uh, broad array of topics and um, reading helps you to get there. I remember there was one time I had a test. It wasn't the JLPT, it was the OPI, which is an oral proficiency <laughs> examination. I'm not sure what the I stands for. The, the question they asked me was like, okay, you're driving your car and you crash. Call for like backup and what do you do? It was like, to be able to be used to different topics right. is really going to prepare you across <laughs> the board. You got to read, guys. How do you actually build a study plan then? What, like, what does the actual day-to-day -day look like? How do you actually get started? I actually took the JLPT last year, and it was uh, it was the first time I had taken a standardized Japanese test of, of any kind in years. And I just kind of wanted to feel what it was like, you know, yeah. again, to be in the hot seat and to go through the preparation process. But one of the things that I did during that preparation that I yeah. recommend, I think the very first thing you should do is get the official uh, mock exam for the JLPT. A lot of people <laughs> don't think that this is a good deal because you can only use it one time and it's, um, you know, it's like three hours worth of stuff and then it's over. But the reason that I thought this was so great was because first of all, it's exactly the test that you're going to be taking like it down to the instructions on how to like fill out the form and mm. stuff you feel mm. like you understand the lay of the land when when you go to take the test you can time yourself as you're going through everybody is always afraid you're going to run out mm. of time right especially because the reading part is at the end of the first section yeah. the part where every problem takes the most amount of time is at the end so um, if you have little checkpoints and you know like, okay, it should take me about 25 minutes to get through this section here. Um, it just helped me to feel like I was, you know, I was on track. It also was just really useful to give me an idea of where I felt really confident and where I felt like, hey, maybe I'll just drill in a little bit more here or there. In my case, um, <laughs> I... I'm the founder of Satori Readers, so I was like, I have, I better crush the reading <laughs> section. <laughs> you better. <laughs> yeah. So I bought this book right here, which I saw you ah, have. Yeah, the I same have the, series. Um, this one's the N2. That's the first one I grabbed off the shelf. <laughs> like, it, it actually tells you how to solve the problems. Yeah. And after you go through a few of those, it really helps in, yeah. in creating confidence. In general, though, how would you go about building your custom Brian study plan? There's several different pieces of studying Japanese, right? There's the vocabulary, there's kanji, there's grammar and so on. And then there's usually one piece that's like where it all comes together. For me, that was um, being at school or being at other groups um, where I could talk to people because suddenly everything comes alive. Everything is necessary. Yeah. To, to be using at the same time, yeah. right? I think that it's really handy to kind of try to push those balls forward in equal proportion. Yeah. Like the kanji part, the pure vocabulary part, and the, and the grammar-centric stuff. Have those ones in equal portion and then put it all together when you're talking to people. And if you don't have that, or even if you do, uh, reading is another crucible just like that where everything comes together mm. and it's like a full body exercise and if you read out loud which I highly recommend um, I, I read out loud every day so just don't feel dumb <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, I read out loud, even when I'm reading to myself, just kind of like in a whisper, just to put my mouth through the steps, yeah. you know, the speech machinery, because there actually is like a physical aspect. Um, I very much believe there's like a muscle memory involved. One really important thing to keep people motivated is uh, avoiding burnout. The feeling that you're not really making progress. Mm. And also, the human brain is not very good at doing things that require attention, but which are also boring for a long time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right? I know a lot of people, you know, are going through like Anki decks where they've got thousands of cards and that has actually kind of become like the main thing. I could totally understand starting to feel burned out yeah. if, if that's what you were doing like all day every day. Yeah. Variety can really help. My mantra is some amount, any amount, every day. There is this huge psychological advantage to doing something every day. Mm even if you just make a little bit of progress. And that is really energizing. But the problem is everybody has real life and um, you know, stuff happens, right? That's why any amount is so important. Mm. Even if it's just one flashcard or uh, running through a little dialogue in your head or actually saying it out loud, yeah. have, a, have a little conversation with someone in the shower or something like that. <laughs> it reminds me of the Japanese proverb, chiri mo tsumoreba yama to naru. Even dust, when it accumulates, it becomes, becomes a mountain, right? Yeah. Just do that one flashcard and maybe you end up doing five or 10, or you know, read one sentence and maybe you push through and read a two or three. Yeah, right? but that habit is but, really like a key to making sure that you actually build up that mountain. Exactly. Without any yeah. dust, there's no mountain. <laughs> Of course, in the beginning, there is a stage where you have to do flashcards just to kind of like put on some just raw, you know, uh, meat on your bones, I guess. When you're in Japan and going through daily life and talking to people, most of the new vocabulary that you're learning is in context. It's not, you know, just naked word on, a, a, you know, All by a study stuff. card, right? Yeah. Supplying that context is so important because it, it gives what I like to call emotional consequences mm. to the vocabulary word. Like a vocabulary word isn't just this like thing that kind of exists <laughs> off in some, you know, abstract world. It yeah. has consequences, right? It's in the speech of someone you care about and they're telling yeah. you about something that's hurt, that's bothering them or that they're excited about or something, you know, good or bad, friendly, yeah. foe, you know, and that's, that can really make vocabulary so much easier. That's why um, in Satori Reader, when you add a, a word to your study list, it takes along the entire context sentence that you saw it in, in the hopes that when you review it, you also review that sentence and you'll remember the story. And we, we really want people to not only do that, but actually once they've gotten comfortable with those words, then to read that episode again. Reading an entire chapter of a story where there were, you know, words here and there that you didn't know the first time around, and now you're seeing them all in context again, yeah. and in the, in the light of understanding them, um, that really, to me, is so much more effective than just doing the, the raw data acquisition, you know. Just memorizing never worked for me. I always had to attach it to usually some embarrassing mistake of using it or <laughs> something like that. But yeah, that's it, right? Context connection. That's it. It's the emotional consequence right there, right? You, yeah. <laughs> that's why I always encourage people, don't be uh, afraid of making mistakes. It's actually, um, you'll- You'll probably never forget you that won't. word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll think about it for a long time. Um, Forever, it'll haunt you. <laughs> it takes on a whole new feeling for you, right? That you could never yeah. get from just the, the abstract learning of it. I mean, that's amazing that you've managed to build that into the actual a feature that makes it more real, so. Thanks. You gotta get the dust. I never cease to be amazed at how a word that I, I look up and I think, this is probably, this is the first time I've ever seen this word in my life. It must be super rare. <laughs> And then, right? And then like without fail, like the next day on the news or something, someone uses it. It's, and it you're just it like, totally happens. I'm like, I'm not crazy. And I know there's like a whole, you know, philosophy behind this, but like, I swear they weren't using that word until I learned it. They're, they're listening. <laughs> they're listening guys. <laughs> they're watching. The algorithm. Yeah. <laughs> that would be an amazing study system. The AI just knew what you learned and it would like automatically <gasps> use. 
Oh my gosh, that's got to be next. That's the next feature. So getting into the meat of it, Satori Reader and all of the spaced repetition, there were kind of like um, memorizable decks that you can export if you want or not use it within as needed. Um, there was also, you know, the audio where you can like play by sentence, you can like do more and just use that to help shadow if you like to shadow and read out loud. I know the last time we talked, you had added the kind of like the fancy sound features with Okuniko and the very immersive experience. So what's what's going on now with Satori Reader? Since we last talked, there's 150 new episodes on this oh site. My gosh. The, the series you're talking about is Okuniko, where we had, for the first time, uh, separate actors, voice actors for each part yeah. and sound effects. And people really liked that a lot. So we did go back and remaster an existing series, Kona's Big Adventure. Oh, that's like the so really popular one. Now you've got like howling wolves in the background oh when Kona's on <laughs> his adventure. Um, it's in, it's pretty exciting. Just as a little teaser, a little mini announcement is that uh, we've had a lot of people really enjoy Kona's Big Adventure. And people over the years have asked us if there's going to be another one. And the news is, Yes, we've just finished uh, writing Kona's Big Adventure 2. It's even bigger and more adventurous, and it's in editing right now, and we're aiming to have that out this uh, coming summer. Oh my gosh. So just something to stay tuned for and watch. Getting, if you haven't already, it's a good time to start binge reading so you can catch up before summer. <laughs> we got Dark Mode done. It's in the website, and I just wrapped up the code for the, the mobile app, so that's coming momentarily, shortly. Uh, you can now play audio from your lock screen. Before, if you locked your phone, oh, it would stop the audio. That's so, great. Yeah. So you can you can uh, have it your phone in your pocket or something, and it'll play the audio. That's like really Thank exciting you. for a jog, and not worry about like jostling Kona right out of my hands. And like I say, the the series wide playback, series long playback is coming soon. Oh, that's exciting. Uh, we have a new series called Kiki Mimi Radio coming, which is actually a play on a classic. It's it's a modern retelling of a classic Japanese story, Kiki Mimi Zukin. We did four ep versions of each episode. So there's an easier and a harder version of each episode, and then each of those versions has with and without sound effects. So you can really find the one that's gonna be most conducive to your learning style. In our easier editions mm. of uh, Kiki Mimi Radio, we actually worked really hard to keep it within a pretty tight set of, of grammar mm. patterns. So we, we're hoping that it'll be appro approachable to um, people who up until now maybe felt like they were a little bit not quite ready for Satori Reader. It's mostly the stuff that you would learn, for example, if you've gotten through Human Japanese Intermediate, plus a small handful of other stuff that we just really needed. It's probably right at the level, a little bit maybe easier than Kona's Big Adventure, and definitely easier than Okuniko, I think. Mm -hmm. So um, you could that could be a nice ramp. You could go through Kikimimi Radio, which also it's only 26 episodes, so it's not a huge, it's 27 episodes, not a huge commitment. Sometimes people feel like they don't want to bite off yeah. too big a piece. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and then you could graduate up to Kona's Big Adventure, which is 45 episodes and kind of, you know, work your way up. Yeah, no burnout. We want to be a friendly voice. We're going to mm -hmm. help you to, to break it down and, and learn it. I love that. Let's say you're outside of Japan and you don't have a lot of access to, um, ah. to native Japanese speakers. We have a, a, a pretty big cast of characters, so you can expose yourself to lots of different ways of speaking. You know, diff different people speak differently. So in uh, Satori Reader, we do try to have a broad variety of voices mm. and voices of older people. Yeah. So another new series that we have coming uh, in January that I'm really excited about, it is called Nutshell Grammar slash Satori Reader Bridge. And what it aims to do is fill this little gap that exists for a lot of people mm -hmm. between the grammar that you know from your textbooks, your, your Genki or Human Japanese or um, whatever background that you have. Yeah and the, the stuff that you really need in order to get the most out of stories on Satori Reader. Mm. This little little gap. So what we did is we created this series where each um, episode takes up uh, one particular grammar point and it has like 30 or 40, 40 example sentences <gasps> that start really short and get longer and longer. Oh, I love that. That demonstrate that little pattern. We assume a certain base level of grammar when, when you start the series, but after that, no example sentence will make use of grammar that you haven't previously seen within that series. Huh. So 
everything should be completely intelligible to you as you move through all the example sentences. And when you get to the end, you will have all the tools that you need to comfortably read any content on Satori Reader. Oh my gosh. I've been dreaming about this for so long, but it's, you know, it's, we're a small team and there's so many, so many balls to juggle. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, but it's coming now. Unlike a lot of other resources, they act, people who use Satori Reader and a lot of the other resources, they have access to you. Like you're very hands-on, You there's the YouTube channel. Even in our past video, you were present, very present in the comments. Like this is, mm -hmm. if you need something to help with your studies or if you have an idea, like I'm not saying it's gonna happen like magic, but it's, you know, you know, who's working the gears back there. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It is, there's, there's real people back there's there. There's real people behind um, the gears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and actually a lot of people don't realize this, but um, at the end of each episode, there is a comments button. And if you don't understand something about the grammar, it's totally okay to ask. That's what that, what that section is for. Yeah. And um, a real human being, which is usually me, <laughs> uh, will will answer your question. And I, I try to answer it in a thorough way so that you understand the grammar point. It's not just a yes or no, but yeah. uh, I, I, I want you to understand. Yeah, there is a opportunity right now with the Cyber Cyber Monday, Black Friday. How long is this sale running for? Our sales typically go for about 10 days or so. So yeah. So keep your eyes kinda... peeled and your eyes on the Twitter, yes? <laughs> yes, Twitter will let you know. Or just go to Satori Reader and there'll be a huge banner telling you when uh, things are ready for you. In light of that, I think we should just go ahead and continue the conversation over on your channel next. <laughs> yeah, please come on over. Don't forget the sale, don't miss an opportunity. And uh, while you're all staying home, let's let's pick up a book and let me know what's been fun reading for you guys. So thank you, Brian. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I hope something I've said has been useful and uh, I look forward to talking to you again. So I'll see you guys over on Brian's channel next, probably. I'll, I'll creep in the comments. <laughs> um. All right, thank you. Bye. <laughs>